or Josie, a precious child, a daughter of the King, purchased by the blood of Jesus, who belongs to Christ for all eternity, who shall never perish and never taste death, in that, though we physically die, we don't cease to exist, a promise from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I pray the Father will use these words to comfort my sister, speak life to her, and encourage her, and not just her, but all of us, to know that Christ is risen and have no doubt that physical death is not final, but it's simply a door ushering us into the everlasting presence of our majestic and glorious Savior, Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. <clears throat> I just want to say, and I know Josie's going to hear this, uh, Josie, I just want to say this, and I mean it from my heart, sister. I love you for the sake of Jesus. You are my sister. You are precious because you were purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ, our God and Savior, the Father's beloved. The Lord loved you so much and loves you forever that he came down from heaven's throne to become a flesh and blood human being, in order to do for you and me what we could not do for ourselves. Pay the debt of sin, live that perfect life, so that by His righteousness, His obedience, you and I can rest assured we have eternal life in Him. We have an everlasting home. So, Josie, I want you to know that I love you, but more importantly, Jesus loves you more. My love can't do much for you, but the love of Christ has done everything for you because it guarantees your eternal salvation. And with that said, let me show you some words from the Master. Words that I pray will be used by the Spirit to speak to your heart, Josie, and to speak to everyone in the room tonight as we see what the Scriptures teach concerning the love that Jesus has for us and the assurance that physical death is not final. We don't go to sleep only to be awakened at the resurrection because our souls, our spirits, leave our bodies. Our bodies go to dust. But our souls and spirits continue to consciously exist. And if we're redeemed of the Lord like Josie is, our souls and spirits will enter into the heavenly presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to dwell there until He comes down and resurrects our bodies, glorifies our bodies to be like His glorious body, uniting our bodies with our souls and spirits again. So Josie, I want you to know, you will not cease to exist. You will not cease to be conscious. You will continue to experience conscious, joyful, loving existence in the presence of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, your Lord and ours. And let me prove that to you. Let's see what Jesus says in John 14, 18 to 19. And Millie will be posting these verses. And we'll look at some of these passages that affirm that physical death doesn't mean secession of life, contrary to what others may say. Physical death means the body returns to the dust, but our souls and spirits continue to be consciously Alive, we continue to experience conscious existence, fully alert, experiencing emotion and sensation. Here's what the Lord says to you, my sweet sister, and to all of us. John 14, verses 18 to 19. Josie, the Lord says, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world will see me no more. But you will see me. And notice the good news, Josie. Because I live you also will live. This is Jesus' promise to you, my sister. He will come to you. He's already come to you. And when, when death comes knocking at our doors, all of us, the Lord will not abandon you. If He's been with you through this ordeal, rest assured, when death comes knocking at your door or my door, He will not abandon you at that moment because He's proven faithful and He'll be there to receive you to Himself. And he says this, because I live, you also will live. Because Christ can never die, you can never die, Josie. And this is something for all of us. In fact, the Lord Jesus says this in John 11, 23 to 27. Let me share what the Lord says to you, my sister, and to all of us. John 11, 23 to 27. Let's see what the scriptures say about death and entering the presence of our Lord. John 11, 23 to 27. Let's see the promises of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus saith unto her, he's speaking to Martha, who's heartbroken that her brother Lazarus has been dead. In fact, this is now the fourth day. He's been dead for four days, and his body is starting to rot and decay. Jesus saith unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. See, as a Jewess, she knew 
there is a day of resurrection. God is real. God is all-powerful. And there's a day in which the dead shall rise. But now notice the words of your Lord and Master, who loves you more than you can imagine, Josie. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Now notice this part, Josie. This has relevance to you and me and everyone who truly believes. Whosoever liveth, whoever lives and believeth in me, shall never die. Josie, Christ cannot lie. <clears throat> he is telling you, because you believe in him, you shall never die. Now what does that mean? Obviously, physically, we experience death. Our bodies may die, go back to the dust and decay. Our spirits, our souls, will continue to consciously live and dwell in His eternal presence, basking in His perfect love, joy, and peace. Love and joy that surpasses all understanding. That's Jesus' promise to you, my sister. Because you believe, you shall never die. Believest thou this? Do you believe this? And Josie with Martha, and with the rest of the rest of the believers here, you do, because it, with Martha we say, Yea, Lord. Yes, Lord. I believe, we believe, Josie believes, that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which had come into the world. So that's Christ's promise to you. You will not die, Josie. Don't see physical death as the secession of of conscious existence. It's not. It's simply the doorway through which you will now enter Christ's heavenly presence, and in His presence you will see His glorified body and His beautiful face smiling upon you, shining upon you, drowning you in His infinite love. Never to experience pain again. Never again, Josie. That's Jesus' promise to you. <clears throat> Let's go to Revelation 7. Let's read 9 to 17. Revelation 7, 9 to 17, as the Lord guides me to quote these verses, showing you how much the Lord loves you and the assurance you have of eternal life in His presence. Revelation 7, 9 to 17. It's a long passage, but it's worth reading. <clears throat> Revelation 7, 9 to 17. After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, this includes all of us believers, if we're true believers, this includes Josie. A great multitude, which no man could number, of all the nations, kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb. Notice this, Josie. These people who have been redeemed are there right before the throne of God and of the Lamb, the Lord Jesus, clothed with white robes. You'll be clothed with a white, white robe, my sister palms in their hands and cried with a loud voice you too will be crying out in the presence of Christ the following salvation to our God which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and it belongs to the Lamb who redeemed us who purchased us to be his forever amen and all the angels stood round about the throne, and about the elders and the four beasts, and fell before the throne on their faces and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. This is what you're going to see, Josie, when you enter the presence of Christ in heaven. Angels and the elders and the four living creatures worshipping the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, Revelation 7, 13 and 14. Pay attention to this, sister. Revelation 7, 13 and 14. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? Who are they? What are they doing here? In heaven with us. Notice this is a heavenly scene. These people are in heaven with the four living creatures and the 24 elders and the host of angels. They're all there in the presence of Christ in heaven. And once came they, where did they come from? And I, John, said unto him, Sir, thou knowest, you know. Why are you asking me? You know better than me. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. These people are the redeemed, Josie. That's you. That's me. We are the ones who have our white robes washed in the blood of the Lamb, who have come out of great tribulation, trials, pain and suffering, and endured by the grace of Christ, 
now to dwell in his presence, dressed in white robes, to enjoy the Lord as the Lord enjoys us until the end, where then he will bring out our bodies, resurrect our bodies, making them incorruptible and uniting them to our souls so that again we will have physical bodies dwelling with Christ on earth forever. But in the meantime, your soul, your spirit will be here, Josie, in the presence of Christ, dwelling in the presence of the Lord and of his holy angels, seeing the Lord who loves you more than you can imagine, who has purchased you by his blood and washed you white as snow. Revelation 7, 15 and 16. Therefore, they are before the throne of God. That's your destiny, Josie. That's my destiny if we're truly believers. We are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. God will dwell in our midst, Josie, among us to enjoy him forever. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. Neither shall the sun light on them nor any heat. You won't get hungry anymore. You won't be thirsty anymore. The heat won't scorch you anymore. <clears throat> For the Lamb, our God and Savior, Josie, Jesus Christ who loves you, our God and Savior, for the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them. Josie, the Lord will feed you. The Lord will give you to drink. The Lord will guide you and you will see him in his physical body. Now you see him by the eyes of faith. But in heaven you will see him visibly. You'll see his glory and you'll see his physical body. And the Lord in his physical body will hold you will embrace you, will, will love you, will feed you, will smile upon you, and wipe away your tears, shall lead them unto living fountains of waters, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. This is what you have waiting for you in glory, Josie. Jesus said, I will not leave you as an orphan. I will come to you, and because I live, you will live. Josie, you cannot die. Physically, your body may go to the grave, but you, that person who is conscious, will continue to be conscious in the presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who loves you more than you can imagine. Revelation 21, 1 to 4. In fact, we'll read all the way to 7. Revelation 21, 1 to 7. Revelation 21, 1 to 7. <clears throat> and I saw a new heaven, a new earth. This is our destiny. In the meantime, if we die now, Josie, we go to dwell in the presence of Christ in heaven, where we'll see him in visible majesty and glory. But a time will come where he will bring us out of heaven, our souls and spirits out of heaven, and he will come down on the earth, resurrecting our bodies, uniting our bodies to our spirits, so that in glorified bodies we will live with him on earth forever. A perfect world, free of all sin, free of all pain, free of all suffering, free of Satan, no more cancer, no more disease, no more heartache. That will be done away with completely in this world that Christ comes to transform. It will be the abode of righteousness where only the righteous who have been purchased by the blood of Christ, like yourself, will dwell forever. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Now notice this, Josie, 3 and 4. Meditate on these passages. God's promise to you, my sister. <clears throat> and I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. God will dwell with us in heaven and dwell with us on earth, and he will dwell with them. They shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them. Josie, God himself is going to be with you, not just in a spiritual presence which you cannot see. He will be with you visibly. You will see his visible glory. You will hear his voice audibly as you're hearing my voice, but even clearer. You'll see the God-man Christ in his physical body, so you'll behold him physically, visibly, and touch him as he embraces you in those physical arms and loves you and loves on you forever. That's his promise to you and all of us who believe. Right? He shall be with them and be their God. And Josie... Here's Christ's promise to you. God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. You will no longer cry anymore, Josie. Your son won't cry anymore. Your mother won't cry anymore. None of you will cry anymore. Why? There shall be no more death, 
neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, my sister, for the former things are passed away. No more pain, no more suffering, no more death, but perfect peace and joy in the presence of Christ. And he that sat upon the throne said, this is God speaking to us, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. See, now notice what he's telling you, Josie. It's done. Have no doubts. Have no fears. Christ is risen. He's alive. He left the tomb empty. It is done. And these words are true and faithful. Coming from a God who is true and faithful, who cannot lie. He is real. And he says these things are true and faithful. It will happen. He said unto me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He's given it to you free of charge, Josie, because Christ purchased this by his blood for you. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. This is your inheritance, Josie. And I will be his God. He will be your God, Josie. And he shall be my son, my daughter. You are his daughter. He is your God. This is your inheritance. These words are faithful and true, true and faithful. So don't be afraid, my precious sister. Christ will come to you, and he will usher you into his glorious presence forever. In fact, let's see what Hebrews 13.5 says. Hebrews 13.5 to 6. Hebrews 13.5 to 6. Hebrews 13.5 to 6. Let your conversation be without covetousness. Watch here what the, the Bible says. And be content with such things as ye have. Be content with your station in life. For he hath said, Josie, Christ has said this to you. I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. I will never leave you, Josie. I will never leave you. I will not leave you as an orphan. I will come to you. This is why, Josie, we say the following in Hebrews 13, 6. So that we may boldly say, see, because Jesus has promised you and cannot lie to you, Josie. Because he cannot lie, and he said, he will not leave you as an orphan, he will come to you. Never will he leave nor forsake you. So we may say boldly, with great confidence, the Lord is my helper, Josie. I will not fear what man shall do unto me. I will not fear what cancer will do to my body. I will not fear what disease will do to this body. Because the Lord is my helper, and he will never leave nor forsake me. In fact, let's go to Psalm 27. Psalm 27, let's read verses 1 to 10, zeroing in on verse 10. Christ promised to you, and after this, I'll show you passages where it says that Christ loves you more than you can imagine. And the Lord willing, I'll conclude it with references which speak of the Spirit leaving the body and the Spirit continuing to exist consciously, fully aware, so that you know that when physically the body dies, our spirits continue to exist. Psalm 27, 1 to 10. Josie, this is a psalm that God has given to bless your heart, to reassure your heart, to fill you with confidence that Christ is Lord. He's risen. He's alive, and you will dwell in His presence. <clears throat> psalm of David. Yahweh is my light and my salvation, Josie. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? Yahweh is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? See, this is our response, Josie. We're not afraid of anything. We're not afraid of anyone. We're not afraid of death or cancer because of the power of the Holy Spirit. When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came up upon me to eat up my flesh. See, cancer is your foe. It's your enemy. Cancer is your enemy. Even though it's eat up your flesh, it shall stumble and fall. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Josie, my heart shall not fear. The war should rise against me. In this I will be confident. In this I will be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord, Jehovah, Yahweh. Watch this, Josie. This is for you, my sister, and all of us who believe. One thing I have desired of Yahweh, of Jehovah, dwell in the house of Jehovah all the days of my life. And that's where you're going to be dwelling, Josie. You will be dwelling in the house of the Lord, in the house of Yahweh in heaven, in the heavenly tabernacle before the Lamb, all the days of your life which are eternal, everlasting days. 
that will never end. To behold the beauty of Yahweh, you will see the beauty of Jesus, your God in the flesh. And to inquire in his temple, for in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. That rock is Christ, our eternal refuge. <clears throat> now notice what 6 to 10 is going to say. And now shall my, my head be lifted up. Josie, lift up your head above your enemies, including cancer, which is an enemy that is round about you. Therefore will I offer in the tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto Yahweh, Jehovah, unto the Lord Jesus, who loves me more than I can imagine. Hear, O Yahweh, hear, O Lord, hear, O Jehovah, hear Jesus, when I cry with my voice. Hear Josie's cry, Lord Jesus. Hear her cry. Have mercy also upon her and answer her. Hear, O Yahweh. <clears throat> When I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me and answer me. When thou sets, when thou settest, seek ye my face. When he said, seek my face, my heart said unto thee, my heart said to you, thy face, Yahweh, Jehovah, will I seek. Lord Jesus, Josie is seeking your face. You told her to seek. She's seeking. We're seeking. Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. You are our help and Josie's help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and mother forsake me, Josie, notice this, when my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord, Jehovah, Jesus will take me up. This is his promise to you, my sister. Because you've sought his face and want to dwell in his presence, he will never leave nor forsake you. Never leave nor forsake you. Even if your parents abandon you, Jehovah, Yahweh, will take you to himself to dwell in his presence forever. Now, I can read the rest of the psalm, but I wanted you to focus on verse 10. When my father and my mother forsake me, then Yahweh will take me up. He will take you up to him because he loves you more than you can imagine. On a related note, Isaiah 49, 15. Isaiah 49, 15. What does it say? Josie, these promises are for the people of God. Promises that can never be broken because Christ can never lie. Promises that are for you, my sister. So take it to the heart. These are for you. Isaiah 49, 15. Can a woman forget her suckling child that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yea, even they may forget, yet will I not forget thee. Did you catch that, Josie? Here Jesus says, Can a woman forget her suckling child? So that she doesn't have compassion on her womb? Maybe. It's possible she can forget. And we've seen many examples of women abandoning their children. But Jesus says, the Lord God says, I, however, will not forget you, Josie. I will not forget you. You know why? Put verse 16, Millie. Put verse 16. If your father and mother abandon you, the Lord Jesus will take you to himself. If even your mother forgets you, the Lord Jesus will never forget you. He will never leave nor leave nor forsake you. Do you know why, Josie? Isaiah 49, 16, here's why. Here's the answer why. Behold, I have graven thee. Josie, I have graven you upon the palms of my hands. He has actually engraved your name in the palms of his hands. Thy walls are continually before me. Your strong foundation will continue to be before Yahweh who is your rock, who will protect you. He will never leave nor forsake you. So it's clear, Josie, the Lord will never abandon you, especially in this time of need. And your distress, he too is distressed. And your pain, he too is pain, because he loves you more than you can imagine and sympathizes with you. But I want you to understand that what you're going through is nothing in comparison to the eternal glory that awaits you in the presence of Christ. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 4, 7-18. 2 Corinthians 4, 7 to 18. 2 Corinthians 4, 17 to 18. What does the Lord say here? The Lord speaking through the Apostle Paul. This is for you, my sister, and for all of us. Not only here, all of us need to hear this because we're all going to die until the Lord returns. And when I say die physically, because as far as being conscious is concerned, we will never cease to be conscious. We'll continue to be conscious and alive and fully alert in the presence of Christ in glory. 2 Corinthians 4, 7 to 18. 
2 Corinthians 4, 7 to 18. Start from 7, my sister. I want to start from 7, read to 18. So we can read the context. Because Paul too suffered. Paul too went through tribulation. Paul too at times despaired. But he never lost hope. Because he knew whom he believed in. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, Josie. You're an earthen vessel. You have a treasure in you. That the excellency of the power may be of God, not of us. You have the power of God residing in your earthly vessel, your body. The power of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit living in you. To give you the grace to go through things that you would never imagine you could ever go through. Now notice what he says. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Right? <clears throat> We are troubled on every side, not distressed. Perplexed, not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken, Josie. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus. Like Christ who died, we too are being subjected to death on a daily basis. That the life also of Jesus might be made manifest into our body. And like Christ is risen immortal, we too have that life of Christ residing in us. Guaranteeing our immortality. For we which for we, we we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake. Always we're subjected to death, persecution, attacks, insults, imprisonment, tortures, sicknesses. We are being delivered unto death because we love Jesus. However, because of that, the life also of Jesus is being made manifest in our mortal flesh. The reason why you keep enduring, Josie, the reason why you have not given up is because the immortal power, the immortal life of Christ is in you, preserving you not to give in because you know immortality is yours. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. God's life in you. Christ's life in you, sister. The Holy Spirit who gives life in you. We having the same spirit of faith according as it is written, I believed, I believed, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore speak. See, Josie, we believe in Jesus. We know He's risen. We know He's immortal. We know He's alive. We know He's all-powerful, and therefore we speak of Him. Because His power and life lives in us, lives in you, sister. Knowing that He, that he now notice this, sister. Knowing that He raise up us also by Jesus. Notice that? The same God who raised Jesus is going to raise you up by the power and grace of Jesus Christ and shall present us with you. So God is going to present you and me and all of us to Himself, to His Son in glory to dwell in His presence forever. For all things are for your sakes. Everything is for you, Josie. That the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. Because of His infinite grace which He's poured out upon you, for all eternity you're going to be thanking Him, praising Him, loving and adoring Him for what He did for you. To procure eternal life for you, immortality, perfect life, a pain-free life, a life free of disease, sadness, brokenheartedness. That's what Jesus has done for you. And you'll praise Him in His presence forever for that grace. Now notice this, Josie. 2 Corinthians 4, 16 to 17. For which cause we faint not. We don't faint. We don't lose heart, Josie. But though our outward man perish, our physical body is perishing. Your body is perishing. Yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Inwardly, your soul is being renewed and transformed. For our light affliction. Do you see what Paul says, Josie? As painful as your cancer is, and may Christ give you the power to overcome and endure it. In comparison to the eternal riches, the pleasure, the joy of being in Christ's presence, your cancer is a light affliction. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, it won't last forever, Josie. That's Christ's promise to you. Worketh for us. Your light affliction is bringing for you. A far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. You see that, Josie? Your pain is bringing you eternal glory, eternal pleasure, pleasures that cannot be described, pleasures beyond our ability to fully comprehend, pleasures that will make that cancer seem like nothing once you enter into that glory that Christ has, has for you and all of us. Finally, verse 18. 
while we look not at the things which are seen. We're not looking at the cancer that's devouring our bodies. We're not looking at the physical body that's decaying, that's dying, that's withering. We're not looking at that, but at the things which are not seen. Josie, you and I right now, by the eyes of faith, are looking heaven real, more real than even this place that we're in, more real than we can imagine. By the eyes of faith, we're looking at Jesus who's alive who's waiting to welcome you into his loving arms and hug you and embrace you and love you and drown you in his compassion forever. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Amen and amen. I pray the Lord Jesus will use those words to comfort you, my precious sister. Now let me show you about Christ's love. What does Christ say about his love for you? How much does he love you? Let's see. Jeremiah 31.3, how much does God love you? How much does he love you, my sister? How much does he love all of us who are united to him? Watch this, my sister. And I pray in Jesus' name, this recording reaches you sooner than later. I won't take too much time. There are a couple more verses I'll, I'll, I'll present. And hopefully, Millie can send it as soon as possible so you can hear it and be comforted. Jeremiah 31.3. Not only is this something he says to Jeremiah, but by extension to all of us saints who, like Jeremiah, are beloved of God. Here's what it says to you, not just Jeremiah, my sister. The Lord, Yahweh, hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Did you catch that, Josie? Here, the Godhead, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Here, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit are speaking to you, not just to Jeremiah, because these passages are not just for him. It's for us who believe to be comforted. He says to you, I have loved you, Josie, with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn you to myself. It's the love of Christ that has compelled you to love him. A love that's everlasting. A love that will seal you for all eternity. In fact, let's go to Romans 8, 35 to 39. Can anything separate you from this love of Christ? Romans 8, 35 to 39. Let's look at this, Josie, and see. Romans 8, 35 to 39. 